Hey, I'm Bush Baby, and I'm here in Sydney with Parasol. Uh, it's quite hard to get a reload out of me. I don't reload often, but two or three is usually the sweet spot for me. Um, All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Banger. Um, Woman's Touch, released that in 2019, seems to have grown in popularity over the years. It wasn't like a smash hit instantly, but it grew. Space. How are you going? Doesn't make any f***ing sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There's one that's even worse, which is like, we're not here to f*** like this. <laughs> I've never heard that one. That's wild. That no, one's... we're definitely not here to f*** like this. Um, oath. The, with the swear word before. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here. But yeah, that I've heard people saying that a lot. I like that. So there's a video that was burned into my conscious when I was younger. And it's, I don't know if you saw it, but it was the car that was driving through the field. And then at the last minute, a guy just popped up on screen, uh, on screen and just like jump scared you. Anyway, that video was like the first jump scare I ever saw, and I must have been about seven or eight, and it, and it scarred me for life. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, well, thank you for the pretense of that question. So I heard one of my favorite producers answer this question, and, and he said um, he misses a lot, but he just never posts it. And I was like, that's a very good answer. So I'm stealing that one. I think, yeah, I miss a lot, but the ones that hit, I post. <laughs> Concealed carry license, yeah. I have to declare them at the airport. <laughs> um, bullet tooth, I get asked for a lot because we went back to back in Leeds um, a few months ago. So that's a big one that people are asking for at the moment. Hopefully we can make it happen. Probably Cutty Dub 23 which came out fairly recently. That's probably my favorite. Or uh, Rock Up On The Mic that just came out uh, recently as well. So, yeah. I'd say on this tour, it would probably be Perth. <laughs> They've all been amazing, but that one like really stuck out to me. And then at home, it's probably uh, Leeds. Really fun crowd every time. True, I've heard. So yeah, I started making um, tunes when I was about 13. Uh, before that, I was playing a PlayStation 2 game that my parents got me for Christmas, and you could just make tunes on there. It was really fun. And then, yeah, when I was 13, I started using Fruit Loops. Um, and then I started using Cubase for a bit and now finally I'm on Ableton. And then I started doing stuff under Bush Baby in 2015, 16. Um, did that all the way up until 2021. And then I took a brief hiatus from making like bass heavy stuff to making house and techno kind of stuff under a different alias called Vincent Vega. Um, did that for a year, played some shows, and then I went to a festival at the end of 2022 and saw all my friends from the original like bass heavy scene and watched all of their sets and I was like this is amazing. I forgot how much I love this music. I still love house and techno and everything but um, I yeah basically just fell back in love with it again and then started making stuff under Bush Baby again and it's been just over a year now since I've been back. <laughs> it feels good to be back. <laughs> so yeah, during my hiatus, I think uh, the main thing I learned was like to be grateful for everything because I basically had a year of playing no shows. I played a couple of shows here and there, but um, nothing like what I'm playing at the moment. So 
and now it feels way more intense like this tour in Oz and New Zealand has been amazing and I'm super grateful for it now and it feels it feels so nice to be able to like yeah tour fully and yeah play a bunch of shows so yeah being grateful for everything I think has probably been the biggest thing that I've learned Yeah, so the tune that probably means the most to me out of everything I've made is a tune that I released on my album in 2021 called um, I Wonder in brackets for Billy because my friend passed away uh, in on the New Year's Eve of 2020 and I was kind of halfway through making the song and then I ended up flipping it and turning it into something different and then just thought it'd be perfect if I sort of like paid paid like my respects to him, put him in the title and then put it on the album. So that's probably the one that means the most to me for sure. I actually can't remember. Yeah, that's all right. It's been a while. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> what I would say is like nowadays, it doesn't feel like as much of a big gap between countries because of the internet and everything. Everyone's kind of playing. The scene has kind of gone global now. So um, having your tunes played abroad is wicked. I think what's even cooler is when you see a tune that you've made in your bedroom and it's like going off overseas and it's people are reacting to it really well in a different country. That's always really sick to see. Probably the piece of advice I'd give myself is probably start making dubstep in like 2010 <laughs> or like 2009 and just catch that huge wave. Um, but no, I'll probably on a more serious note, I'd probably say, um, I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I don't know if I would have listened to myself when I was younger. Um, but I would say, yeah, just don't worry about stuff so much. Just relax. Like, I think I was very worried about, for a long time I didn't play live because I was very worried about playing out. So I was always a producer first and then I had to learn to DJ and I was just super nervous. I still get quite nervous before every show, but I was really nervous when I was younger. So I'd probably just say, just relax, chill out. It's all gonna be fine, it's all gonna be all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, because I've spoken about this to people and um, I know a song that I'm working on is good when I get like really strong imagery in my head. So I don't see it like in front of me but it's kind of the wheels start turning in my head. So when I start making it, it's specifically with sound design and drums. So if I'm making drums and they start slapping, I can see it almost like I'll get strong imagery of like a chariot or something like through the sky or certain bases will be certain colors. So Reese bases for me are like very dark brown. And then um, certain wobbles are like circles black circles with and like I can kind of see through them it's weird um, and it's kind of when I put it all together it, it makes like a really strong image in my head so I don't know if that, I don't know if that's a superpower but that's kind of when I know that a tune is sounding good <laughs> but it's called um, damn it I've just yeah synesthesia um, but I think that is strictly when you can actually see like see it in front of you because it's when the um, the connections in your brain kind of misfire. So people end up seeing color, smelling, sounds, tasting, numbers or whatever. But with for me, it's much more in my mind's eye. Um, it's not in front of me, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's not with every tune, by the way. Like if I don't get that with a tune, yeah. then I know that it's kind of flat. That's how we never miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like rock up on the mic, like organs are very yellow for me. They're like yellow cubes. Is that why? And when it's like, it's kind of like, and I can see it like going up and down, like a yellow cube bouncing up and down. It's weird. It's a whole thing in my head. <laughs> Probably just looking forward to more shows. I've uh, got a really cool collab coming out. I've got an EP coming out. Um, I, I want to do a headline tour in the UK at the end of the year, maybe, or whenever we can make it work. Because um, I've never actually done my own headline tour, so I'd love to do that. So yeah, the collab's with um, Champion. It's me, Champion, and Killer P on a tune. Um, came together really easily. 
I had a tune that I was working on and then uh, we'd been meaning to collab for a while and eventually I got round to sending him the stems and then he took the original vocal that I had on it, took it off, put Killer P's vocal on there and it kind of like flowed really easily and then it's been going off in my sets so we can hopefully get that out there soon. Um, but yeah, Champion's the guy man, like super, yeah. super nice guy. Banging, uh, banging producer as well, I've been doing it for a while, so it was really cool to work with him.